How's it going YouTube? DM Tombstone Belts back here again with a brand new video and uh, today this is part two of the how to series and get guys you're probably thinking well aren't you, I thought you weren't going to do it well guys with the last video it was hard between if I was going to do it or not but there was a little incident but anyway I decided to continue the series I changed up the title maybe a couple times for the first video but I decided to just leave it as it is so this is part two of the series about Basically cutting out your plates and doing the gold sides. And I, before I continue on with this, I want to tell you guys, some people are like, what about using foam like this instead of using cardboard? There's this one guy I want to explain. I try to explain as much to some people that may not know, like can understand what I'm doing as much. That's why I mostly got to show them instead of telling them because nobody care if they may not understand well. I mean... Believe me, if you don't have cardboard and you got is this, this is just as fine, just the problem. You see, it's a solid piece of styrofoam or foam, as this has air pockets in it for cardboard. The only reason why I prefer this, because of those air pockets, you can curve the plate. As you see from most of my belts, they have curves on them. Majority of my belts that don't have curves on them, because majority of the time, it's made out of this material. And that's the thing. More the belts look more realistic when they have curves in them. That's why I would use cardboard. I mean, I only got this little piece of foam to explain to some people. The, some people don't know understand the fact that what I do with cardboard can be done exactly the same as with styrofoam. So what I do on on cardboard is exact same on this on foam, except for one thing with foam you can't. You can't curve it as much. I mean, because it's not as flexible. And two, if you try to bend it too much, it either bends wrong or it snaps in the middle. So anyway, what you do is you cut the plate out with a utility knife. Well, anyway, continue on with the process. So basically, now I cut out the second part. I mean, I cut out. Now you take a utility knife and you cut out the plates. I've already cut them out, so... So now you got your other plates that you're going to do for the add-on part that goes on top of the main plate that will be attached to the belt. I got the piece of styrofoam here. And now what you will need is this. Gold duct tape. Or silver duct tape if you, get, if you guys do silver. But as well for the other part, like this top plate, I will use this. This is mirror tape. As you can see pretty sure you can see the reflection of the camera in there it's it's basically looks more to the proper metal you could get on a belt and that's mostly what I would use this is what I use for the undisputed belt and as well mirror tape that I use for the Stanley Cup championship belt so anyway guys I'm carefully just going to explain on this plate I'm not going to do all of it because of the runtime. So anyway, well, before I continue using the cardboard, I want to explain what this. So basically, if you want the tape to last on this, what you got to do is remove the paper piece off the styrofoam. I mean, you don't really need to do this, but I prefer doing it because of A, you're just adding another layer to on, a, on this styrofoam, and two, so the tape can bond to the, to the layer well. Because sooner or later, wear and tear, that paper is going to come off and it's going to take the tape with it. Might as well have it where the tape sticks to the main part of the belt. And you got to do it on both sides. I prefer, like if you're going to do two layers, which usually I would recommend doing. Like all my belts are not one layer. Because I stitched them on until I put the bolts in them. The stitches were going to come through, and you got to cover those up, and it's going to look bad. That's why you always have two things. So, like, this would be the bottom layer that go onto the leather on the strap. You'll stitch it on and glue it on and all that. Then you have the second layer that will go on top of it to cover up all the screws in that. Cover up the stitches. Well, anyway, guys, now that both sides are taken off with the... With the paper, then you just get your tape.
Cut it out. And apply it. And apply one layer. I mostly would just recommend doing one layer. And cut the excess off the edge. I mean, you can use it. I mostly prefer using scissors on this because with the utility blade, I mean, with the utility knife, you have to, you know, use like some type of table or something to block the, I mean, to put the plate on so you don't cut into the other stuff that doesn't need to be cut into. But Scissors is mostly easier until you get your grip onto the edge a lot better. Any access that probably you can't use again, like the little strips you just discard. And you have like, I'm not going to do the full thing, just show a little bit. You cover the whole side, like the whole surface. Then you go on the other side, cover the whole surface. I would say as well, you cover the you cover the whole side that's going to be part of the back the back part of that's going to be a part of the leather, so it gets something to hold on to while stitching. Because and especially with this foam, because a when you're stitching foam on the, the the stitching could rip through this easily. As you can see, even when I dig my fingernail in it, you can see a little groove line in it. This thing is very fragile. That's why if you're going to stitch it on, I'm going to say put both sides with tape on. So, so at least when you're stitching it, it won't tear through the styrofoam. But anyway, I'll show you guys what I do. I mean, I know this is probably not a really good exciting part of my series but people always wonder like how do you do this how do you do this and some people like I thought I carefully explained my first how-to series but probably those that most people think I rather show it and not just tell it so I carefully now have now I think I should just carefully explain and show how it's done So nobody can be confused and be like, well, I don't know how it, this is done. Like, there's a certain thing you do and that. And plus, too, with the newer style, how I make the belts, I think I'd rather have it, it carefully more explained because, uh, like, you guys probably don't know, like, how I do the bolts on the back and that, how I do the curving on the plates. So... Maybe I should just do another how-to series of a new, like, version 2.0. So, guys, I'm doing this for you so, you, so I can carefully try to explain it as much as possible of how I do these belts. I mean, maybe you may understand now, or you may not, but I'm telling you guys, this is what I do. I try to carefully explain it as much as possible. I mean, I know... Maybe I could try to set up to where I could probably do it like Spanish subtitles or that to this video. But I tell you guys the truth, I don't know much of doing YouTube videos. Like I don't know how YouTube is done. I'm a hey <laughs> yeah, cause tell you the truth guys, I'm not that big of And yeah, sometimes you may not cut the tape long enough because I'm just doing this freehand, I mean by eyesight. If it, it's not long enough to go layer per layer. Just save the access for later to when you can use it. But in the meantime, yeah, I'm just rambling on so I can just, so, I, so you guys just don't get bored off from uh, seeing me do all this. I mean, plus two, I could probably have like a fast forward video in this. I could probably put text on the screen, but then again, guys, I'm not good with editing. 
as you can see, all my videos are just basically like vlogs. They're not sped up, they're not slowed down, and there's no text on the screen, as you can tell. Because, one, I'm not doing this like on a fancy camera, I'm not doing this with a computer, doing fancy editing. And that, but I'm just trying to tell you guys I'm being as truthful as I possibly can when I do these videos. So, and two, why I think you think why I do gold on this side and this side because this side is the one that's going to be stitched down to the plate. The top one, I say for like styrofoam, obviously for the, the glue to stick to something. And exact same for here because when you because you're going to glue these plates on top of one another, and it gives and plus two with the because the fact that both sides are cardboard. Uh, they mostly, you see how they easily rub around, but with the tape side, a lot harder, to, it, ha, it has a better grip on it, so you have something to attach to the glue and hold it down. And what I say about gluing, you also have this specific type of glue. Like, for, for example, like if you use hot glue, I mean, it could, depending on your material, you, you got to make sure you got to use the right glue on right material. As like super glue or something equivalent to that, it may work, but if it if it starts like say like this, super glue obviously it's gonna work through the cardboard, but it may just soak through the cardboard, which is the reason why I use tape. And sometimes it may not stick well and it may come apart, which is why I recommend using hot glue for the cardboard piece because hot glue it works good, it applies fast, and two it bonds it really well. So, it would do just fine. If you heard a noise in the background, I apologize that someone's probably here. So, anyway, guys, like saying hot glue could work. Wood, I mostly, back in the day, I used wood glue, which it's real, it could, gives you enough time to set the plate off right. You let it dry and it, it would somewhat bond well sometimes, and sometimes it may not, but then I realized, huh, hey, think about using something else, but then I discovered about using hot glue, I never thought hot glue would work, because as well, if you're using like styrofoam, the hot glue could be too hot where it'll melt right through the styrofoam, like how super glue would also probably dis cause the styrofoam to disintegrate. Which is why I re not recommend using styrofoam or any type of, I mean, like regular, like, like st anything made out of styrofoam is obviously not a good choice. But it's best bet if you can't get cardboard. You just got to be really careful what you use. Because, like I said, super glue, it will dissolve this is styrofoam. If you don't, if you haven't completely sealed off the styrofoam from the super glue, hot glue, I mean, it could work, but then again, it could have too much excess heat to melt the styrofoam. I mean, there's probably other glues out there that could work, but it's just that some could be expensive to get. And don't forget, I'm doing this the cheapest way possible. But anyway, guys, so. Just showing you that you do both sides of the plate but I mean for the top layer I mean for the top layer that goes on top of the plate I would recommend I mean I would do both sides but I'm gonna for this part I'm just gonna do the one side the top side with this with the tape I'm not gonna do it right now because we've done this for 14 minutes straight so uh, obviously there's Obviously, what would be the point of doing like a whole 20 minute video just me adding the duct tape to the plates? You'd be like, okay, we get it. You do both sides with the tape. So, guys, I just let me just add this final layer. 
there. So I do a run. So I do one last like talk to you guys of a one last run through of what you do. Then I'm gonna end the video and try to do all this set up for part three. So anyway, guys, like you said, like I said, you will cut out your plates. No matter if they're cardboard or styrofoam. I mean, and as well as I can explain, yeah, as you can see the difference between the thickness between cardboard and styrofoam. I mean, foam, obviously, you want the, if you want to go for thickness, this is the best bet. But like I said, when you try to curve it, it doesn't do well. And two, chances are it's going to do this. Bend in the wrong, bend in wrong ways. And two, if you certain times it could just crack down the side, and it's just gonna make it feel like it's curving too much. But with this, you could just curve it in any way, and you could bend it back if it's wrong. It's just fine. Cardboard could do fine for you. But I'm saying, but all if you go all the way forward is this. This is fine. As you can see, I mean, you can curve this too. It's just an oddly shaped curve. You gotta like. Mess around with it good enough till you get the right curve, and there you go. Remember, like what you do, and like I say, what you do with this, with the cardboard, you can do with this. It's the exact same process for any type of belt you use. And I know I explain, like some people like, but you're doing it on a specific type of belt. No. As you see with this process, I did this with the How To Series before with the European belt. I'm doing the exact same here with this one for the ECW belt. It's done every, done the exact same process every single time. Doesn't matter what belt you do or what materials you use, it's the exact same. You just cut plates out, put tape, put the, put metallic tape on it, and and so on and so forth. And the process will keep doing the exact same. For, other, for the next part of the series, all right? Well, anyway, guys, that is it for me today. So don't forget to, so that is it for this part two of basically getting the plates ready. So don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already, leave your comments below what you guys think. Any more questions? And as well, if you guys haven't known already, I have a Twitter page at dmtombstone 96 if you guys got Twitter, look me up. Don't forget to follow me there. But anyway, guys, this is DM Tombstone Belts. I'll see you guys in the next video.